lighting up the night. Timex Indiglo. Reassuring me the night is A-OK. -okay. Not that spooky. <laughs> Starting it off with a loom shot here. That fancy watch show. I got two models to review for you right now. I have four variations of both models. So technically it will be a four for one WRV. What value? What value? Just like these watches, by the way. These are high value timepieces. And I do like Timex. I really do. They do have some quirks. I will cover them here. But mostly these watches are a total win for the price paid. Says me. Says nothing fancy. So this is the first variation I will show you. Right? And I do have another one coming right now. This one, by the way, has been discontinued. Prepare to be sad. However, you can find it on the secondary market. Boom. Into glow. This is the other one I will review. I have two variations of it to show you in inventory for over two and a half years. Awaiting airtime here in the show. And here it comes. This one actually runs a 2016 battery. That's the same battery that powers a lot of red dots. That's a lot of power. And you do need power for the Indiglo function, obviously. It's illuminating the entire watch face. It makes the hands, no matter if they have loom or not, stand out. So it doesn't really matter if there's loom on the hands, like this version does have it. They're still gonna pop, totally pop. This is a white-faced watch. This is a black-faced watch. I'm gonna show you, show you both of them here in the light in just a second. This one has been programmed by myself with a Gundam decal. Right there beneath the Timex logo, you'll see exam. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. I just know it's a Gundam thing. <laughs> I got a D Gundam decal sheet and I really liked how it looked. So this is a post-programmer watch review. I do have three of these programmed. There you go, time to turn on the lights and get down to business. Cool stuff on the table. Check out the A26B, y'all. That is cool. That's like a one to 200 scale, I believe. I just added it to the show. Really cool. Look at the nose art, stinky. Shark's mouth on it. Probably some 50s coming out of that. Really interesting. I think the A26 also only had one pilot and the right seater was the flight engineer and gunner. Pretty cool. Uh, depending on the variation. And that plane had a lot of variations. I'll talk about it more. We talked about the A26 and showed you several versions from the Vietnam, Korean era in the Patreon Museum visits, right? To Castle Air Force Base, and we went up to Hill Air Force Base in Utah. Really fun visits. I think there's an M48 tank over here. That's not uh, an M60, I'm pretty sure. One of my SAC patches, Strategic Air Command. This is where I got my military career started, j -Rotsy. Army J. Rotsy. That's no lie. And we have a President Trump coin right here. Thank you, President Trump, for all you do for America. On we go with the review. Okay, you saw them at night. They are very clean watches. They are very classic watches. The first one I'm going to show you is currently being produced. Everything will change. Watches are always being discontinued. Here comes two variations of the Timex Standard XL. Very clean, classic watches. I have reviewed other ones, not of this brand, but another brand that looked very similar. I do have one on the table, and I just love watches like this. Maybe you don't know that. I have reviewed like Mudmasters and big tactical watches, and too thick and just obtrusive to wear. This review's for you. These watches wear like you're not wearing nothing at all. Yeah, they are small. This standard XL is 43 millimeters in diameter, nine millimeters in thickness, 50 millimeters lug to lug. They both, both of these models, have 20 millimeter lug spacing, which I really like. And I've said that before. I love 20 millimeter straps. They are very cool. We're gonna look at all the details as we, as we roll along here. I think I will sell you on these watches, especially at the value price point. If like me, you do like very clean lines, uncluttered appearance, classic design. 
That's what I'm gonna call this review. These are the Timex classic round dial watches, super affordable. Oh, and by the way, there are others. Like the Weekender. I did have, let's see, three Weekenders about two and a half years ago. I got rid of them. I returned to, I gave the other one away to a TMP -er in a giveaway. And uh, I like them. They look about like these, but they're just too small for me. 38 millimeters in diameter, 40 millimeters in diameter, that's the Weekender. But other than that, it's basically the same watch in a bunch of flavors, by the way. The Weekender comes in all different strap variations, all different face presentations. Very popular watch, probably Timex's uh, biggest seller, the Weekender, and it's been around forever. These are bigger versions of the Weekender, but they're really not that big. They're not like 46 millimeter, they're not like 44, they're 43s. So guys with different size wrists, I'll say six and a quarter, all the way up to eight inch wrist could wear this watch. It's very versatile. Okay, so that's the first version, standard XL. Here comes a version that has been discontinued. It looks very similar to this, but there are some key differences. This is the one that's using the 2016 battery. It is the Timex Easy Reader, two variations. By the way, both programmed by myself. Thank you very much. After I programmed them, and by the way, changed out their crappy straps. Yeah, they these ones, not these ones, the standard ones that they're making now, really good straps. But these ones had really crappy straps on them. I, I basically threw them away. So these are aftermarket straps. I'll talk a little bit more about that as we progress here. Uh, anyways, programmed, legible, it pops, matte white, fluorescent orange, nice. And it's called Easy Reader for obvious reasons. Look at the big Arabic numerals. Yeah, is this uh, a senior's watch? Maybe. I just like how it looks. And it is super legible, even without my mods. Super legible, really clean appearance. But both of these watches have the same look. The classic look. Uh, and first we'll start off with the very thin classic bezel. I just love it. I really do. That gives us a very large effective face, doesn't it? Yeah, so thin bezel, only a 43 millimeter watch, but look at our effective face. We've got no chapter rings in there, taking up case space. So we can have nice big hands, we can have clean markings, and we just have a very clean, legible, classic, that's the word, classic watch. For about, by the way, 52 bucks, give or take, 52 bucks. And I bought these ones direct from the Timex website on their Black Friday sale. Yeah, so it was like 20% off. Just go to Timex.com and watch it. Watch for the sales. They have 20% 20 uh, 20 sales there all the time. It makes it really affordable. So we'll consider these to be about, this one about a $50 watch. Maybe a little bit more, depending on which variation you get. And there are three variations currently of this one. The white one, polished case. We've got the black PVD coated case. Blue face, this is a navy blue face. I really love it. And then they have the classic black presentation of the standard XL. That's the name of this one. Okay, and the Easy Reader did come out with a lot of variations. These ones were even less expensive. I bought this one in eBay for 30 bucks used. It came with a crappy, glossy white strap on it. Yeah, it was the OEM strap. It was like a glossy white strap. Again, I threw it in the garbage and I fitted this strap on. We'll look at that in a second. And this one, I think I got for about 44 bucks. So look at the value on the table if you just want a classic analog timepiece. Okay. Oh, and by the way, let me throw this in there. If you're not afraid to wear Timex. Yeah, this is not a watch for the urologist. Oh, I'm sorry, the urologist. Timex isn't good enough for them, generally. I mean, the classic Timexes, maybe the reissuances of a classic older Timexes, they, they will sign off on those. They'll go, oh yeah, that's cool. But generally a $50 Timex, most of those guys will go, ah, it's not good enough for me. I'm sorry, I'm not that way. And I'm so glad I'm not that way, that I can put on uh, you know, a $20 watch and be happy. And by the way, I, I do have some more expensive timepieces. I mean, running right now is a 
hands modded, shown in another video, and I did decide to keep it, Alpina Start Timer, Swiss watch in 42 millimeters, cream colored face, wearing matte black hands, fluorescent orange chronograph hand that is running on a timer, separately from the seconds hand, that's a seconds hand here, beautiful navy blue strap, Cordura, this is a really awesome Swiss watch. Didn't break the bank, didn't break the bank, but this one makes me happy too. And by the way, that's a smaller watch for me. That's 42 millimeters. Generally, I'm like, 42 millimeters? This has the same aesthetic though, right? Classic lines, classic markings, clean Arabic numerals, stick hands, right? Thin, easy to wear, but thin bezel. So we have a wide effective face. This watch makes me so happy. I love it. Back to the Timex product. I'll start with the standard XL. We'll consider the markings on the unmolested version, this white version, which by the way, I really like this white version. I love it. It reminds me of the Shinola Argonaut that I reviewed. It also has the same looks and I'm seeing a lot of the same things on this watch that I said for that one. Classic appearance, full Arabic numerals. I really like it when they have full Arabic numerals. And then we don't have micro gra uh, graduations between the minutes. It's just a minute tick, you know, right there. And again, this is unprogrammed. This is what the hands look like if I don't change them. And in this variation, I really like it because these are black outlined hands. And I would not program this watch. You might be surprised. It has great legibility in daylight conditions or highlighting conditions, which we are in right now. And they're not shiny. Neither is the seconds hand. So it's black, black, loom in the middle, indiglo, which I showed you. I'm pressed right now, but you can't see it in the light. Perfect. Thin bezel, wide effective face, perfect. Let's look at the navy blue one. I'll show you that up close. I really like this dial color. Program, dudes. Yep, I changed it. So I painted these hands matte white. Orange on the seconds hand, once again, right? I know some guys really get bent out of shape when the seconds hand doesn't hit the registration marks perfectly. Uh, I said in comment to a TMP Patreon dude, I was like, you know, as a programmer, when I take the seconds hand off to try to put it back on so it hits that, you're really doing a risky operation there because you can bend these hands and completely ruin the watch. So once I get them off and on and it's close, I just leave it. I just live with it. I don't really care. And by the way, even out of box, I don't think it's perfect. Anyhow, let's take a look at this one. Ooh, closer, a little bit closer registration than the one I jacked up. <laughs> I don't care though, whatever. It's cool. I love that blue one though. You may notice there's no date in this. It's just time. Again, just simple, simple analog timepiece. Uh, but again, I'm usually wearing my smartwatch for those functions anyhow. Here comes the easy reader. We talked about the big numerals. Other than that, it's the same case markings other than we don't have the minutes marking on the exterior. This is a black face version and exam decal in there as well. Polished case version of the easy reader. This is the blackened case. Really like that, how clean that pops. Both of the cases, once again, are very thin. This Easy Reader, by the way, is about the same dimensions. I think I mentioned it, 43 by 10 by 49. So it will disappear under the cuff. Very thin watch to wear. Don't expect a lot of water resistance. This one is 50 meters, and this one is only 30 meters. So you need to put on a different watch if you're gonna go swimming. And they both are pry back cases, which is a quirk of the watch. I ain't gonna lie. And with a standard XL, when I programmed it, i.e. I took it apart, one of the things I did not like about it, and you don't have to worry about this because you're not gonna program it, is I thought the case back is a little bit fragile. So I did pry it off, and in putting it back on, I had a dickens of a time. It just was not setting. And one of the things I didn't like about the standard XL is it doesn't have a real good battery retention device in there. So the battery kept popping out, had the plastic insert around the movement in there, and I could not get this thing to snap back on. And I think it kind of bent a little bit. So I had to like uh, push the case back out. I finally got it to seal, O-ring intact, it works. 
It's just a quirk. You know, how long is the battery going to last? I think a long time. I think you can count on these batteries for like at least two years, maybe longer, depending how much you use the end to glow function. I do like this case back with the Timex World logo back there. It's polished. It does look good. And I reviewed that to so Chrono XL. It has a pry back case and I gave it high marks. So I'm not going to sink the watch for that. We have an onion crown here, non-screwing variety. This is kind of a kettle case here. More of a classic case and it does differ from that easy reader so this was the previous version and they did change it and i think it is an improvement this one right here very similar though right they look pretty similar but there are some variances you can see the lugs how they change them we've got the timex uh marking on that crown and then this was very plain jane the easy reader i really get the vibe that timex as a watch company is upping their game I have spent some hours on the website just searching around, seeing what's out there. I'm not going to review a lot of them because there honestly is not that much interest in my watch reviews. I'm just being honest. But I think they are really providing higher quality watches. Their straps are better. Their case treatments are better. They have some really cool Expedition varieties that have come out. Those are kind of the outdoorsy tactical watches that Timex is doing. So kudos to Timex. They're doing a great job. I like the polishing on this case, 316L stainless steel. It looks like it's a much more expensive watch. And I'll say what I always say, it's really funny that guys will spend like two grand on a watch and talk about the Q word, quality. Come on now, is there really that much difference in these cases? Not really, not really. And a lot of them are still, at least parts of those watches, so-called so Swiss watches, including this one, this Alpina, are made in China. And they can still be called Swiss watches. There you go, on to the straps. Uh, I'm gonna start off with these aftermarket straps I put on the Easy Reader. This is just a simple 20 millimeter uh, leather NATO that I put on. And the strap that came on this one was a plain Jane black leather strap. Again, I didn't really like it, got rid of it. And here we go with this strap. Not a Timex strap, I believe. This is an aftermarket leather strap on this one. And I aged it. So I actually took sandpaper to this sucker. Look how cool it turned out. Look at this. So I just sanded this strap. I forgot where it came from. It is a tapered 20 millimeter strap. Thick, looks pretty good. I like it. Works great. Two keepers on it. And it really sets this watch off, doesn't it? That looks like a very classic watch. It's been like through heck and back, <laughs> right? By the way, these are mineral glass crystals and I have my protectors on it. Each one is wearing my protector. You may see a film on there. Very cool. I made a whole video about that. You can look it up. These straps are fantastic. These are the stock OEM straps. Still tapered, 20 millimeter variety, lined leather, Timex OEM strap, just fantastic. I would not take these straps off. And this whole portion right here is very classic. See how the lugs kind of come out and then they downturn and they, they're kind of delicate on the standard XL. Very classic 1930s Bauhaus style is what I think. So this is black and to match in the case. Here's the black one, textured a little bit differently. And by the way, Timex on their website has some great straps. They have some great straps. In another video, uh, I'm gonna review the Expedition Galatin model. I'm gonna show you some of their uh, 22 millimeter straps that are fantastic. This one's just standard black, white stitching. This one also had stitching, it was tan though. Awesome. And by the way, these are very lightweight watches. They weigh two ounces a piece. The standard XL on the right, and then we had the Easy Reader on the left. This is model, by the way, one of these is T28071, T28071. And now we go on to competitive options before we end this very fun, I hope, nothing fancy watch review. Reviewed previously, I really love this watch, is the Wegner 1041.10, also wearing a nothing fancy hands modification. <laughs> this is a blue variety. And when you saw this watch last, I told you I was gonna do this. It's because it had the shiny hands. I know, I know, I keep saying the same thing, shiny hands. But now look at how cool that is. 
So now the hands completely match the Arabic numerals, thin bezel. This is a little bit smaller. I think this is a 42 millimeter, but it looks bigger because of the thin bezel. We do have a date in this one, the Wegener. I would prefer a date in these, but it's okay if it doesn't have it. Mineral, crystal on this. Actually, I'm sorry, this is sapphire coated on this one. I think it'll say it on the case back. Yeah, right there, sapphire coated, signed because it's been modded by myself. Did I put a date on there? Yeah, I just did it uh, 12, 2019, bro. Screw and case back, I like that. One thing I've noted about the Victorinoxes and the Wegener watches, their field watches, their dive watches, they've gone up in price. So when I started reviewing these about three years ago, they were affordable. This one was like 55 bucks for us. This one now, if you find it, this is a discontinued variation, but ones like it, they're like, I think wearing like a buck 75, $200 price tag for a quartz. I have a harder time with that because I was just introduced to them at that price point, the same price point as these Timexes. I wouldn't pay $200 for this watch. Mm, not $175, mm, not $150, maybe $100 and a quarter for a Wegener blue face like this. I might, I might do it. Really nice watch though. It really competes nicely against a Timex product. How about this one? Speaking of inexpensive watches, programmed by myself, this is the $17 Navaforce, which I do give away to TMP Patreon members. And don't take that, if you get one of these watches, don't take that as meaning that this is a crappy watch and I'm nothing fancy is just sending you something that's inexpensive. It's inexpensive, but I wear it and I like it. The Navaforce or whatever na other name that it gains in the future is a great watch. It's a Miyota Quartz movement, it has a mineral crystal in it, black in cases, decent straps on them. Although sometimes I do change the straps out like I did with this one. I think this is a 24 millimeter. I don't know where I got it. It is an improvement over the stock strap. Programmed, i.e. the same treatment you see here. Matte white hands, fluorescent orange seconds hand with a T7 decal in there. What's not to like? Competes, I think, very nicely against these watches. It is bigger. It is bulkier. Doesn't have the same classic appearance as the Timex product, but okay. Just throwing it on there and making the point that I don't really care if a watch is expensive or not. I just care how it makes me feel. Here comes a much more expensive one. This is an Aristo Bauhaus, if I'm saying that word right. Don't really care if I am or not. It's model 4H160M, water resistant to 30 meters. I pay 270 bucks for this. Yep, 270. And it's an excellent watch. It's a chronograph. Has the same elements to it though, doesn't it? Mesh bracelet band on it. I actually like this mesh band on it. I've worn it. It does pop off once in a while though. It's not perfect. You know, they say it's made in Germany, but a lot of it is made in China. They just put that on there to make it seem more special. Uh, no hands modification on this one. Not necessary because it's stark already. Notice you have pure black, non-shiny hands matching the markings perfectly against the cream colored face. You have a positive display date in there, a chronograph function, which is actually quite usable in this watch. It's legible, you can see it. That's a chrono hand running right there and that's the seconds hand in there in the two o'clock subdial. I love this watch, I really do. I think it's expensive for a quartz watch because it wears the Aristo name on it. So you might want to think of this basically as a Chinese watch that's kind of masquerading as a German produced watch that's overpriced. To be totally honest with you, it's overpriced. This watch should be about $125, if that. Uh, I still like it, still do, and it's a good cast member because it teaches us things, right? Like I'm discussing right now, it teaches us things about value, about looks, about classic watches. I'm gonna wrap it up, holy crap, 28 minutes. All right, let me say this, highly recommended. They have their quirks. One of them, by the way, I haven't mentioned yet, is that they do tick a little bit loudly. I think the standard XL ticks quieter than the Easy Reader does, but that's one of the Timex things that, that they've always had. They just kind of tick loudly. So if you're in a quiet environment, you may hear your Timex classic round dial ticking, reminding you perhaps to reevaluate your life decisions. <laughs> Every time I hear a ticking clock, it's like, Oh crap, what am I doing with my life? Am I investing it properly? 
that's just a minor quirk. And I think most people that run the Timex has just learned to live with it. And again, mostly you won't hear it. It's only when it's really quiet. But everything else with these watches is aces. The looks are very classic, legible, clean, uncluttered. The sizing can fit almost everyone, right? The loom is insane with the Indiglo. The durability is there. The case treatments are there. Now with the standard XL and others that come after it, the straps are squared away. You don't have to go out and spend money on a strap if you don't want to. But if you do, have fun with it. Go out and get some like these. These are 20 millimeter, really affordable leather options I got off eBay. Actually, the Timex straps are a lot better than these. Look at this one. That's the OEM strap. And these are the ones I got off eBay. And they're okay. I could do it out of all the gloss, so there you go. Wrapping it up. These are great watches. Timex classic round dials. See you next time.